Hello, hello, this is Postgres FM, episode number 54, right? And today is my turn to announce the title, although like we, we mixed everything uh, after vacation. Michael had vacation and uh, we mixed everything. So M Michael chose this topic, I wouldn't do it, but I need to announce it. Connection pullers. Pulling. Right? Yeah. Yes. Well, I think this is a really important topic um, for Postgres in general. Of course. Um, so I'm I'm keen to talk about it, but I'm uh, I also am aware that I need to get back into my uh, reputation of picking topics that you find boring. So that that was my main goal here. It's not as boring as others. Oh, damn. <laughs> I yeah. can do better. And I think it's not only important to Postgres, it's also important to any database system and it's also important to how applications work with uh, database system. Yeah, so should we talk a little bit about why first before getting into some of the details? Well, I think uh, today we don't need it because uh, we have application pullers on application side. Yeah, so what, the question is why do we then? Why do we need something on the Postgres side in addition? And actually, I know... Let's often, start from application side. Why do, we yeah. need, why, do, why do we need it on there? Because uh, to create connection is very expensive. Yeah, there's a, a few different types of overhead, aren't there? You know, in terms of latency, in terms of server, like, resources. Um, and yeah, in, in combination, I guess at the, at the beginning, you could argue you don't. If you only have a few users, maybe five users of your little application, a uh, tiny if little database just serving users, them. just for example. Yeah. Working simultaneously. Uh, then you don't need anything. No application pooler, you don't need a database pooler. C continue happily with your simple setup uh, and probably don't do, do anything. If you have 100 users and 90 of them are have very slow connection, for example, uh, some internet in California, and uh, mm -hmm. they work remote, like from running application on their home internet, connecting to your database somewhere. And uh, you have only like eight cores, probably you already need pitch bouncer or something. It, it, good point, actually. Slow queries as well, even if it's um, even if even if it's not necessarily slow connection, but really long running queries is an interesting point as well. But yeah, let's. Um, in fact, actually, worth mentioning, a lot of application frameworks come with poolers by default, right? So even if you don't right. do anything, there's a chance that you're using one. Uh, right. In, because they yeah. know Postgres is slow, right? <laughs> well, mean, that's it. Yeah, that's the Postgres. Is slow, not Postgres is slow. I, 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 let me, like, let me apologize. Postgres is very fast, but cre connection creation is slow. Yeah, and there's and until recently, the overhead of each connection was relatively high in terms of until uh, Postgres fourteen, right? Yeah. So, is there a little bit of a what's the rec what's the advice? What's the standard before that version and a different standard afterwards? Does does it just change the threshold? Very you like need? yeah, like some some kind of rule. It's not it's. Yeah, you, you know, take your number of course and multiply by two, three, four, five, and this this is this should be your max connections. Don't go above it. For example, if you have an Intel server with ninety six cores or hundred twenty something twenty eight cores, probably you shouldn't go bef be, uh, above uh, five hundred. But it was before Postgres fourteen, which yeah. uh, like Postgres fourteen now has improved. Uh, work with snapshots and uh, connection scalability, and probably you can go. Well, I, I saw before people went to thousand, two thousand. I saw three thousand with servers like ninety six cores. I told them oh, it's, it doesn't feel good. They said, we, but we are fine. I, I said, okay, let's let's check just let's just run PG bench in, in its uh, silly default behavior uh, load testing. I mean, I mean stress testing when it tries to max out and uh, uh, consume all the resources. And if you have additional thousand uh, idle connections, you will see how overhead affects you. And it's easy, it, it's easy test. You see uh, run PG bench CTPS latencies, in this case TPS, usually the main metric, 
and then additional thousand connections and you see like 20 30 percent penalty i don't remember details but it was like something like that so this is your pr price you're paying constantly you you make your ser server do additional work it couldn't it could avoid and uh, interesting that in that particular case they had uh, they, they resisted uh, installing pitch bouncer because they also said we have a java application we have connection pool that was uh, something interesting name i don't remember it was an interesting name um, there is a pooler on java side on java application side so we don't need it but the problem you know the problem right not not only if your application works very far and uh, connection is slow this is one of the cases but usually in good project uh, this this is not a problem like usually application code is quite in, at least in the same region uh, as your database but the problem is different uh, when they scale stateless nodes they add more and more nodes and forget to okay they say we can scale let's uh, multiply number of application nodes by two but they don't decrease uh, pool sizes by two so <laughs> more idle connections are created because uh, active connections don't uh, change uh, at, at, uh, when they just add nodes, right? They, Not immediately, we, no, yeah. Yeah. Well, they can grow over time, or if <laughs> there's some marketing campaign, they can spike, of course. Uh, load can spike, but if they just uh, add more application nodes with the same usage in terms of users yeah. doing some work, uh, asking for to, database to do some work, uh, the this scalability efforts for those who are responsible for application nodes lead to uh, incre uh, significant increase in in number of uh, idle connections and this is how you can end up uh, having 2000 connections on postgres and then you try to convince them to decrease pools they also resist like we, it doesn't feel safe for us and like okay this is time when, when we probably need a connection pooler on database side yeah, awesome. So you've already mentioned PG Bouncer. That, from my experience, that feels like very much the de facto standard, um, f and it has been for a long time. I actually looked it up. Do you know which year it was first released in? Well, I can suspect it was around two thousand, probably six, seven, or so. Yeah, great guess. Right? Uh, two thousand seven. Yeah. yeah, that's when I. That's the date I saw. I remember. Uh, Asko Oya and Marco Kreen uh, from, maybe I, I pronounced it wrong, I invited them to conference in 2007 or 8, uh, the developers wow. of Sky Tools and so on, because of like yeah. Sky, Skype was hot in terms of Postgres usage at that time, mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. it was like a big company with goals like we need scalability to billion yeah. users, so it was impressive. Not only PG Bouncer, but of course PG Bouncer is probably the most successful product they created. Yeah, um, and still to this day, uh, pretty much the standard. It does seem though in recent years we've had a, prolifer a proliferation, hard word to say, um, of other tools. Um, and and the, of course there was... Yeah, there's a new, new generation of pullers. Mm. It's related all, uh, to to many reasons, and one of the reasons is uh, PG Bouncer became true Postgres product. Uh, it can it can pass five years uh, if you have major functionality proposed, and uh, so. <laughs> well, I guess to defend it a tiny bit, I feel like PG Bouncer is a similar stability level to Postgres. I feel like issues are as rare and. If you need something that is safe, that has been battle tested for years, a PG Bouncer for me is still the number one choice. Now, if you, there are obviously newer ones that people are testing in very high, but not necessarily testing, but um, have developed for themselves in extremely high um, throughput environments that are clearly working for their case. But if I if I was if I needed one tomorrow and didn't have the resources to go and test all the others quickly, uh, or even like properly, I would still pick PG Mouncer myself. And which mode you would put it on? Well, so this is okay. So let's get into the because it's not free, right? There are downsides to having a pooler. No, maybe maybe let's mention like we discussed this now. Like there is new generation. Let's mention some names. Yeah. Okay. Right? Great. 
because uh, first I think uh, in this generation was Odyssey from Yandex team. It was uh, several years ago, and I know how exactly they decided to create it. It's also written in C, and uh, uh, the idea was uh, our pull requests are not accepted uh, fast enough at PG, in PG Bouncer, and also some things we would do differently. They, I think they use threads, because PG Bouncer is, uh, is very similar to Postgres process. Yeah. And uh, I personally bumped into the issue of single CPU usage uh, not once, and it's very painful. So you just you don't expect it if you don't monitor uh, this single process uh, situation risks. And uh, yeah, usually it's like after you passed like ten thousand TPS on single node, maybe fifteen thousand single PG bouncer process is not enough. Yeah, and at that time, SO reuse port fun, fun, uh, feature wasn't supported by PG Bouncer, so you need to run PG Bouncer on different ports, and then you need to teach your applications to to talk to to load balance basically, or you need to put some people put HA proxy, for example, as additional layer. Mm -hmm. it's like everything sounds not good. SO SO reuse port, it's a very good feature. You know it, right? What SO, was it? Sorry, SO reuse port. No, SO? but it makes sense. So a serious port, it's a Linux feature which allows multiple processors to listen to the same port. So a few years ago, finally, PG Bouncer started to support it. And now you can just run multiple PG Bouncers configured to listen the same port, and Linux will decide how to balance it. Nice. So, so you can go beyond 10,000, 20,000 TPS and, and more and more and utilize all cores you want to utilize. If you run PG Bouncer on the same machine, you, of course, take some resources from Postgres. This is also an interesting topic. We should probably, probably touch it, uh, where to run it. Because when we say closer to Postgres, it might be on the same machine or on different machine. And so. I, a lot of what I hear is that put, putting on a different machine is smart as long as it's close to the uh, database, like same, re, like same. It's Some people say we lack uh, structure in our podcast, uh, and <laughs> I, I now see how, why, right? Because we jump, jump, jump. Well, le let's return to this topic as well. But uh, mentioning new new players, Odyssey, right? It's quite interesting. It has interesting mm -hmm. features, really interesting features. So, like, I I, I remember they presented it on at PGCon a few years ago, and so on. And it's also quite battle tested in, I think, thousands of databases already. But I saw also complaints about some bugs. You are right. Uh, Puller should have should be very reliable. It's like a network. If some issue happens, it affects everything, and it's global, global incident uh, causing global in incident. But I think uh, in many cases, I'd say already battle proven, polished, and so on. Uh, this I cannot say about new players. I like. I think. I think it should. Like, you need uh, several years of active usage, and of course we have chicken versus egg problem because if people don't trust, they don't use. But uh, they they need to to use to start trusting. But uh, okay, so new players are PG Cat, right? PGCAT. Yeah, so a really good blog post from the team at Instacart about adopting PGCAT. Yeah. So that's a, a huge deployment using it. So I'll, I'll link that one up as well. And uh, it's written in Rust, if I'm not mistaken. It's, so it's interesting. And is that from the team at Postgres ML? That's right. the, yeah, great. And uh, I especially like, like I never used it yet, but it's in my quite short to do to try when I finally have free time. Uh, or probably I will try to use it in some projects I have uh, because like I I why is it in that list because in February I created issue issue with in, in their github repository with idea uh, so I, I I've noticed these guys implement features very fast like developing very quickly impossible for, for for example a PG bouncer absolutely impossible it will take a few years so I asked them like we in Postgres community we lack good feature mirroring so we want uh, t from connection puller from this middleware we want to receive uh, requests to send it to the main server and, and uh, pass back the result but additionally send it to another server and ignore responses 
it's it's very good thing to for testing and um uh, the key like besides reliability the key metric for me from for for any uh connection pooling uh, software is uh, la- latency overhead and it should be tested in proper way so like in my favorite way instead of running pg bouncer in pg pg bench in uh, normal t- default mode when it tries to maximize everything right? you try to limit tps to have uh, same numbers of cpu usage and all resource usage for example 25% up to 50% cpu usage normal case like for some loaded uh, production for example and then you just compare latencies uh, you have uh, with one middleware one pooler and another pooler and this is how you ideally a pooler should add a very small latency like below 1 millisecond 1 millisecond is already quite big latency overhead i mean especially on rtp yeah which is I guess, right. what we're mostly talking about yeah All right so i wonder with mirroring what will happen this very interesting and i just don't have capacity right now but i'm very curious and i think this is super interesting feature so they implemented it like in a month and yeah. uh, already merged already there but i haven't tested it if if anyone needs similar functionality because it it can give you similar to like like gin brew deployments or realistic testing next to production you create you, you, database like clone in, like primary and uh, you can just uh, promote it at some point and, st- and the sa- at the same time you start mirroring some some queries will fail but it doesn't matter if you have a lot of queries uh, like big numbers uh, this t- testing will be much better than attempts to replay logs or something yeah so it's a very interesting said, feature yeah when you said it was super interesting i thought you were trying to segue to the other the other one that popped up recently being supervisor <laughs> It should be a super bouncer, but it's somehow called supervisor. Yeah. Supervisor means probably it. It. Uh, I don't know. Like I, this. This name I would use like for uh, for things like Patroni, for example. Yeah, My, I guess that is that. I think that's actually part of their roadmap. That ah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Well, it. yeah. It's that very ambitious, and it's written in Elixir, right? Yeah, I didn't look that up. I, fair enough. Yeah, and also have Crunchy Proxy and uh, PG Agro. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. It looked like Crunchy Proxy hadn't been work. It was uh, last I saw it was like a beta from 2017 or something. I, did, I didn't think it maybe I never touched, never like tried. A... I don't know. I tried. I would say I'm going to try PG Cat definitely, and I lose. I use a lot of PG Bouncer. Ah, also there is uh, RDS Proxy, but we are not going to uh, discuss proprietary software on this podcast, right? <laughs> Unless it's a special event, like let's discuss proprietary software. So out of list. I'm but sure RDS proxy, have a... they, they have interesting feature. Like we need to look at uh, proprietary things sometimes because it can give you uh, insights uh, if you develop your own tool. It has super interesting feature. So when they started to develop, I mean AWS, RDS, they started to develop uh, for Aurora global database, uh, multi-region setup. Uh, secondary region is uh, read only right and you put rds proxy there and local connections are constantly uh, like just reading but what if, what if they want writes uh, our primary is in different region what to do so rds proxy can accept write i mean receive write then go to primary instead perform this write wait until this write is propagated to local St- uh, standby server and then read from it maybe not from it I'm, i don't i may be mixing some details but it's very interesting concept of like inverted load balancing instead of saying oh this is all right let's go to that node no 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 we go in uh, to na- to our node always but there we have some magic to create right and wait until it propagates interesting concept so yeah yeah indeed the so I was going to ask you a question around this. Do you know like why are there so many of these projects? Like why why they seem to all have similar goals, right? Like we want something that PG Bouncer doesn't support. We've got a couple of extra requirements. Why not work together? Like what's the uh, are they all very because different Cathedral in their goals? versus Bazaar as usual open source. Uh, it's normal for open source to have many 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 competing attempts. Uh, 
because people think uh, p- people have different uh, views if it mm-hmm. was a single corporation of course it uh, it, it would immediately like Unless uh, sometimes the competition is uh, provoked inside corporations as well, like two teams competing, but not ten teams competing, right? Uh, in, but in, usually in case of corporation, like cathedral uh, model, we have a roadmap, name already defined, approved by management, and so on. Here we have many teams with different views, different needs, and trying to fulfill these needs. I think it's similar to what we had uh, with uh, auto failover and backups. To backup tools, uh, a few few leaders will survive and probably remain. I think. Yeah, I've not been around long enough to know that there were loads of different backup options. Uh, what about auto failover? What yeah, about true, application actually, yeah. systems before application went to Postgres nine zero? It was a it was opinion of, of Postgres developers that replication should be outside always. Replication. Can you imagine? Yeah. So we had well, Sloney then. The same Skype guys created Londeste. And also, I, I used yeah. both, and uh, k- kind of painful. Also, Bucardo and many others. Yeah, of course. And well, then, I've just remembered. And Kubernetes then it went to operators. core. Yeah. Right. A backup system is slightly different, but we, ha- we now have obvious leaders, Volgi and PG Backrest. And still, have, Barman. Barman, yes, many others, yes, but leaders are these two. Barman is much less in terms of popularity, in my opinion, at least around but, me. I, of course, I'm biased. Well, I see most. I see most using Backrest still, but I think Wall G for huge up clients. Maybe I can Backrest see why is that's. more popular, maybe. But I have a lot of Wall G cases as yeah. well. So, and Wall E already, see. I think, out of uh, consideration, and some others also like. And uh, about uh, auto failover, also auto failover should be outside of Postgres. Okay, it's still outside, and we have obvious leader, Patroni. And many attempts to change it, but uh, in this case, I think leader is like one big leader, and and that's it. <laughs> so here, I also expect we, we have a long-term leader, PJ Bouncer, but uh, mm-hmm. many attempts to mm, compete, and these attempts are from latest years, and I'm I'm not sure what will be the result because, of course, P- and they also have uh, pressure on PJ Bouncer as well because I I I observe it very closely. Well, so. uh, yeah, you sent me one of you sent me a pull request that seems to be making progress. So it, there, there seem to be some signs that PG Bouncer may speed up a little bit or may get some of these improvements. And maybe as it does get some of them, prepare some of these other for, for for uh, yeah for transaction mode, right? Yeah, for exactly yeah, for transaction mode. Which is uh, the, so transaction mode? In fact, yeah, this is where Let's this is where we modes. fucked off, right? Um, Transaction mode is the default, right? And it's what most people use in, as far as I've seen. Honestly, I, I don't remember default. I know, like, let's start with session mode because it's easier. Yeah. It's the, the simplest m- mode. Like, you hold your, you have your session, you're always connected to the same backend, Postgres. Backend means Postgres process through uh, this puller, and it never changes. Context never changes and so on. Good. Then you say, I, I, I'm going to disconnect. Okay. It's also beneficial, by the way. You know why, right? Or to fight oh, with yeah, idle I... connections, for example. Pardon me? To fight with idle connections, for example. So we still, we, like, we don't need to keep a lot of idle connections to, to database. We disconnect faster if not needed, for example. Yeah, but the, the benefit of the session, might, I mean, obviously it has more overhead, um, but the down, I, I always thought the downside was, or oh, sorry, the benefit was you get the session level features like prepared statements. I would have like that kind of thing. Right, but uh, prepared statements can be implemented for, uh, for transaction mode as well. Right, so but historically haven't been in pull lists. Yeah. Well, there are already three pull requests in PGBounce repository, so hopefully it will be soon there. Mm-hmm. I don't remember, but I think OGC supports it. I might be mistaken. I remember discussions, but I don't I think know. At least, yeah, I think at least one of them was started partly to support. Like, that was one of the main features they wanted, um, but I can't remember which one. So transaction mode is the best. Why? Because uh, we don't, we, 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 can, uh, disc- we can reuse uh, backend 
to do something, some other, to serve some other requests, some other transactions uh, between transactions in the same session. So you connect it, one transaction happens on one backend, Postgres backend, then we have some inactivity, for example. It's not a, a idle transaction. It's a idle session. I mean, it's regular idle. We we like went somewhere to do something like an mm -hmm. application code or something else. And during this process, backend can be used by other sessions, by other transactions. So it's we can how it's called multi uh, multiplexing or something. So like it's the backends remain not busy less time. They are most time busy in this case. Like it's, yeah. it's so more e efficient. High utilization of our of our cores of our resources. Right, right. And uh, statement mode is uh, kind of uh, strange because you can switch to different backend and sign single transaction, and it's like doesn't sound too well. Well, it's in some cases it probably will suit, suit but uh, in general it's it's not safe. To, to yeah, I've, I don't know any. I don't. I've not seen a project that's used it. I suspect there is a use case, but just to, yeah. just for completeness, I guess. Yeah, it's, it's, it exists. Right. So transaction mode is what we usually want to for best efficiency, but in some cases session mode also makes some sense. Yeah. For example, also Pitch Bouncer is responsible for working with slow clients because Postgres already generated result. We shouldn't uh, keep backend, Postgres backend busy when, just to, while we transfer data. It's better to transfer it from Pitch Bouncer and backend can do some something else or just... Uh, not, not do it all or, or, or so, be yeah. ready at least be available right so yeah transaction mode and prepared statements it, it, it's like the sweet spot uh, many people want because prepared yeah. statements of course help with uh, performance as well there's a but like I, I saw a really good write-up recently uh, from JP camera of the um, they they felt that they've often read, oh, if you get to a certain number of connections, you should just use PC, PG Bouncer. And this and the advice was quite uh, limited or only very like it, it said it as if there were no downsides. And they've gone through a very like, thorough blog post of all of the downsides that they've come across. And I'll share that in the show notes because I, th I do I remember do. among downsides. What's interesting? Well, I think these ones were the big were the biggest. Um, Let's have a quick look. Well, yeah. Uh, Lock if, timeouts, statement timeouts. Application um, name usually challenging because uh, I remember some, I, uh, from old days, I remember PG Bouncer hides application name and or IP address or something like that. Like, like, like you need to do special tricks to keep it. But in general, yeah. pros outweigh cons if yeah. you have a lot of TPS. But like one of the good points they made is something I think you've often talked about is having timeouts for things. Um, so in general, uh, you time out things very quickly, but then you can override it from time to time for maintenance tasks. But if you've already if you've already set that, you can't override anymore if you're in transaction mode. You in, unless you connect around the pooler. So either if you want to go through PG Bouncer. You can no longer use like set a longer timeout for this uh, maintenance uh, operation. So I think that was a really good point that I hadn't seen yeah. mentioned elsewhere. Yeah, but also uh, features like, for example, good feature is to <laughs> good feature is that PG Bouncer can give you understanding how many QPS you have and the average latencies because Postgres doesn't have it in internal statistics. It's strange, but only TPS and that's it. Even latencies are not recorded. If you, unless you deal with PG start statements, which is uh, limited because it has max uh, number of queries, right? Uh, but PG Bouncer constantly writing it to logs, TPS, QPS, every, uh, uh, latencies, and also it has internal statistics. I, it's uh, it's implemented in an interesting way. It's like you can connect uh, with PSQL to it, uh, and say show stats, show show help, show everything, show servers, clients, uh, and so on. Uh, and uh, when you want to join it, <laughs> I, I want, for example, to take one information to join with something else. You, there is no SQL there; it only show commands. 
So you, usually you need to export it to CSV and then to import to normal Postgres and then to work with it. But uh, there you also can find QPS, TPS, and, and latencies, and this is very good to monitor. Stupid so, question, but uh, one, one thing that sprung to mind is, does that also then measure failed? Like, you know, when you talk about PG stat statements, you don't get... Um, you only get successful queries, right? You yeah, don't that's get... a good question. I don't know, actually. Yeah, so I don't know. Anyway, from sorry. the bouncer point of view, some query which was cancelled, failed, it still produced an error. It still, if it consumed like a second of time, it still should be, it should contribute to averages, right? I think it should count it, but it's worth checking. I don't know. Good, Very good question, actually. Let us know. I just remember, I was curious, like, well, how might, okay, mm -hmm. we have this TPS. We can see it from PGStar database. But how many QPS, like on, on average, how many uh, how many qu queries are in one transaction? And mm -hmm. I usually usually found myself checking page bouncer logs for this information to understand the, our workload. So this is this is benefit, but also post resume. I think it's undervalued functionality, and I see other uh, pullers also pl plan to implement it. So you can, for example, restart your server, perform a minor upgrade without downtime at all. You can issue pause. By the way, it's tricky to issue pause because when you issue pause to page bouncer, what it does, it says, first of all, no more new, all new incoming requests to to run some query uh, should wait, and it starts waiting itself uh, all ongoing queries to complete. And I feel it lacks some additional options because. I don't want to wait forever. What if a query lasts an hour? Yeah. Right? Well, of course we have set time, time out, but again. maybe yeah. maybe we don't, and so so yeah. I would I would like to wait, but not more some number of seconds. Like give it a give it a, a chance to complete. Give query, ongoing queries some chance to complete, for example, but no no more like two seconds, three seconds or so, because the others already waiting, right? Yeah. Okay, this page bouncer cannot do, but you can do it yourself. You can uh, terminate all long-running queries in parallel, and uh, this in this case, pause will succeed, succeed, and it will return control to you. And uh, in this situation, you can restart Postgres in background, and then say resume, and uh, users notice only some spike in latency, and that's it. And it's like kind of almost uh, zero downtime. Uh, minor upgrade or restart. Of course, it also helps. Uh, we shouldn't forget that it helps uh, with restart because restart can take a, a lot. Postgres restart can take a lot uh, because of uh, checkpoint. Uh, it's called shutdown checkpoint. If you tuned or tuned uh, your checkpoint, uh, for example, increased max wall size significantly, shutdown checkpoint might take a lot of time. And uh, in this case, you should issue explicit checkpoint before you perform attempt to restart Postgres or shut it down. And in this case, it will be much faster. So, so because uh, shutdown checkpoint will om have almost nothing to do because your explicit checkpoint already did something. So you need to engineer this anyway, right? Because it's, it's not easy to use in, in, under, in general case under load. But then you, after you start, you say resume, and it's, it's, it's great. And, but and also you can substitute Postgres node if your pitch bouncer is running on different node, or you can reroute it or something. It can be different node. It can be different Postgres major version. Yeah, that's a good point. So, I mean, I think I saw this as one of the main goals of the supervisor project uh, yeah. is to be able to, I think for them, one of it's not so much about major version upgrades or um, even minor version upgrades. It was about changing the resources so if you wanted to go like if you wanted to increase um cpu like if you I, I think a lot of these a lot of these providers have have done some clever stuff behind the scenes to to be able to resize disk or resize memory like you know different things um but yeah it's a it's a a thing between it's like middleware isn't it it's like a it could almost be a little queue for a while even if it's only for a second or two Right. Um, so yeah, very clever. Right. So uh, summary: uh, Bouncer is the king, but uh, who knows what will happen next? Because we we see some candidates around. Right? Yeah, like in beginning in, of the game. With, of with interesting ideas and implementations. Uh, mm -hmm. 
Let's see. It, it should be interesting competition. Last question, because I know it's a quick one. Should should this be in core? Of course. <laughs> Konstantin Knizhnik uh, uh, is a guy who I know tried to implement it. I remember I was reading very long threads, but it's obviously very hard to convince people on details. And also, well, I, I think Postgres will have it right after threads. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I that's like an it. An, an internal puller. That's it. But remember, if you implement it inside, you lose these uh, benefits of running it outside. Because this rerouting, for example, is a good uh, uh, is a good reason to to like there are pros and cons uh, to run it on the same node, closer, very close to Postgres, or on a different node. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. It makes sense. Awesome. Good. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nikolai. It was, I hope it was requested by users, and I hope it, it is interesting to someone. This was requested, and I'll, I'll follow up those, those Next people. time my, my choice, uh, I, I will work hard on choosing a new topic. Nice. Thank you. Take care, Bye. everyone. Bye.